uh, your life. Wow, awesome. Yeah. Okay, hi everyone, George here. Welcome to a very exciting live stream for you. I'm here at Aquarium Gardens with owner Dave. Dave is gonna be aquascaping this lovely Aquascaper 900 this evening. I'm gonna be filming it using the camera right there. We're gonna take you through the entire journey. Dave's gonna be, like I said, doing the scaping and I'm gonna be doing some running commentary, talking you through the whole process, what we're doing, why we're doing it. Feel free to ask some questions in the chat. I may be able to keep an eye on it whilst I'm filming, but I can't guarantee answering all your questions, but I'll do my best. Um, this event is uh, sponsored by Tropica Aquarium Plants. They've supplied all the plants and the soil for this. That's right, isn't it, Dave? Yes, yeah. Yeah, um, So we'll talk about those in more detail as we use them. Dave's done a load of the prep already. Uh, so we've got all the plants pre-prepared. He's got all the materials that he needs. The hardscape is uh, around the corner. Dave's going to get in a minute. And I'm really excited, Dave, to watch you aquascape. It's nice to watch someone else doing it. I'm looking forward to it. For a change. Really so uh, Dave's a very skilled scaper. You can see some of his work here. You may have seen these three scapes in a, one of my previous videos. I think I published it about three weeks ago. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a privilege to be here and bring this epic workshop to you guys. So thanks to Dave for inviting me. You're welcome. And Thanks for coming along. Welcome, and let's have some fun. Great. Cool. All right, I'll take over. Yeah, go for Cheers, it. Cheers, mate. So Dave's going to go and grab the wood. I'm going to take... Uh, oh, just to let you know, we are filming on these cameras as well. So every so often, I will just be uh, filming a few seconds of footage and then taking a still photo as well. So just bear with me for that. All very fancy. There we go. That's all good. And then I just need to do this one as well. Sorry, guys. Just trying to multitask here. So let us all know where you're from. Have a little chat amongst yourselves in the live chat. And let's have a real kind of nice community vibe going. And that's going to... There we go. Okay, Dave, do you want to go and get the wood? Um, so the... The Aquascaper 900, many of you have seen this on my channel numerous times, three foot long, 20 inches front to back, 18 inches tall, 200 litres, or about 50 US gallons. So, exciting. Opti white glass, low iron glass. So this is pretty epic. Dave's got this huge piece of, what is it, Redmore root? Yeah, Redmore root, yes. And you've pre-attached... Christmas moss. Christmas moss, so is that Taxophyllum crisper? Oh, it's Vesicularia. Vesicularia, yeah. Christmas. And uh, have you attached it? Uh, using moss cotton, ADA moss cotton. ADA moss cotton, boom. Yeah, it takes a little bit longer, but it looks really cool. How long has it been um, soaking for? A couple of weeks. So it's, yeah, it's fully soaked and it'll sink straight away. Cool. Apparently we're buffering. That's bad. Let me know if the video quality is like, like guys, because uh, we do have an option to... Do a sound check on Yeah, can you... And let me know if you can hear the audio. All right, guys. Let me get the live chat on the screen. Live chat, boom. Okay, so here's the blank canvas, uh, rimless tank, so no lid. Uh, we've got suspended lighting. This is actually a brand new unit from Life Aqua, uh, the Max Light, I think it is. It's a, it's a newer version of the suspended units that we've got here. I think the colour spectrum is going to be very similar to the ADA Solar RGB. You can see the RGB LEDs there. Yeah, sorry about the shaking. I've tried to. Um, be less shaky. I've just had a coffee, so excuse me for shaking. <laughs> All is good now, that's good. So, and we've got the wood here. I think Dave's just checking the connection, etc. Loads of plants from Tropica. I think we've got more than enough. We've got the Tropica ones who grow here. Let's have a look at some of the species we're using. Uh, we've got some Blixia. Are these all the species you're using, Dave, in the scape? These one, yeah, two grows? Hygrophila pinnatifida, Heteranthra zostafolia. That is a weed. Good luck keeping that under control, Dave. Uh, and then we've got loads of prepared plants. I can't quite see what they are yet, but we'll obviously talk you through those as they get planted. Okay, all right, no worries. 
Um, okay, so what's the first step, Dave? You're going to put the wood in? Yeah, let's get the wood in. So uh, Dave's actually going to put the hardscape in before the substrate. And it, why is that? Just because the, the, it's going to take up so much room? Yeah, so it's quite a big piece of wood, so it's just easiest to get that in first, and then we can work the substrate around it. Perfect. So that's in. And you're kind of sport for choice with hardscape here, aren't you? Did it take you long to take, choose this piece? Well, no, this piece stood out to me, but um, I took a lot longer choosing all the other pieces that we'll get out soon, but this piece really stood out to me. Okay. We're going for triangle composition mainly. So yeah. It lends itself. Nice. Okay, uh, we need to take a photo. Do you want to move that light back as well so it lights the front of the wood up there? That'd be good. I right, just try and rest this camera on here to get a bit more steady. Let's take a picture. And a little bit of video. Just five seconds. But are you going to put some? I don't want to spoil the surprise, but I'm guessing you're going to put some stones around the base. Yeah, so we're using a uh, dark mini landscape rock, and that's going to be the next thing to go in, I think, okay. actually. Oh, nice. And you're going to put it just straight on the glass? Yeah, straight on the glass. Yeah, yeah. I like putting the rock straight on glass. Yeah. Like it's to live dangerously. Right, so. so this is, um, what, is this called mini landscape rock or dark? Uh, dark mini landscape rock. So normal is quite light grey in colour, but this has been treated nice and dark. Yeah, it's really nice. It's lovely. Yeah. Textures and everything. Very good. It is just the same but darker, isn't it? Exactly the same as darker. I think they just treat it with acid. Some, yeah. Acid washed, I think. Okay, so we'll do another photo in a minute when you've got the rocks in. Hey, little Bobby. Hi, everyone. Yeah, Dave hasn't got a microphone, unfortunately. I'll do most of the talking. I think Dave's comfortable with that, aren't you? Yeah, that'll give me time to... You can focus on the creative process. Indeed. So it is really red, isn't it? But this will get darker once the, the wood gets saturated over the coming weeks. Uh, one of the advantages was well, a few advantages to pre-soaking your wood. Uh, the first one is hopefully that it stays uh, sunk after you've filled with water. Nothing like uh, as annoying as a floating piece of wood once you've scaped. And then uh, you can potentially get rid of a lot of the tannins, which you might not want in a, in a new aquascape. So pre-soaking it helps with that. And also with particularly a red moor root, you tend to get like a fungal or a bacteria, white fluffy build up on the, on the wood surface. And so the, the pre-soaking can speed up that kind of that process. So hopefully you won't get that, you know, that fungal build up. But it's a beautiful piece of wood. It is just one piece. Is this, what do you call it? It's XL size, Dave, is it? Or? Yeah, XL red raw wood, yeah. How much does this sell for at the moment? Uh, in fact, it's a double XL, so 44, 45 pound. Okay, about $60. Yeah. Yeah. 45 pounds, $60, something like that. And have you pre-planned the rocks or are you just sort of picking them out? No, the rocks, I've got loads of rocks over there for good choice, but I'm just, this is, I pre-planned the wood, but not pre pre planned pre the, the rocks. rocks. Okay. Hey, Jen's in the house, one of our fellow uh, moderators. Thanks for joining, Jen. I know Radu's here. Um, maybe Candy and Lizzie might join later as well. You can ask questions, guys, if it pops up on my stream and I manage to catch a glance of it, uh, I might be able to answer you. They want to see the plant stock room. Can I show you them quickly? Yeah, it's quite low at the moment, but go and have a Is look. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, you, you, Dave's going to carry on playing with yeah. rocks. I'm going to go and show you the plant stock room. So uh, I love this place. Aquarium gardens actually keep their plants in like mini greenhouses, so they're growing them hydroponically. Uh, in, so that the plants are actually growing whilst they're being stored, ready for sale. So it is a little bit on the empty side. They've had a big, uh, it's like I had a big push on sales lately. Um, but yeah, here we go. Some Anubias here, lots of healthy tropica plants, some Aquadistri, more tropica. 
And yeah, the great advantage of having the plants stored like this is actually they're growing like they are in the greenhouses. So they're actually thriving in these conditions rather than in some stores, they might slowly be dying as they're kept in kind of old school submersed systems like this one here. These are all 100% aquatic plants, so vallis area, so you can't keep that in this kind of situation. So loads of hardscape. Um, the hardscape selection is pretty epic, as you can see. And yeah, it's just a great store. A couple of dryscaping areas, and there's another one here as well. There's a big wood. Yeah, I'm very lucky to have uh, aquarium gardens. It's only three, two and a half, three miles from my home. Um, Fun fact is actually on my running route, I have a, a sort of five mile, six mile running route and I run up this big hill that leads up to the ground garden, so fun fact. So Dave's looking at some more pieces. Just managed to unplug my microphone, that's handy. This is one of my favourite scapes in the store. Dave, can you just hold the camera a minute? I've, my microphone's just fallen off my... Yeah. Uh, sorry about this, guys. Just a second. There we go. Thanks, mate. Sorry about that. Sorry for the uh, poor camera movements. <laughs> so Dave's just playing with rocks at the moment. I guess you're going for, like, uh, you, you're using the, the deliberately using the strata to create, like, natural flow. Yeah, so trying to go from, obviously, left to right. Yeah. Um, to generate some sort of flow and direction with the with the rocks. Yeah. I think the rocks in this scape are going to be more structural than anything. Okay. So they're going to hold the soil back. Okay. Some of them will still be on show. Yeah. Exciting. Yeah. That light's making the reds crazy, isn't it? On that yeah. wood. It's not. I quite like it. It'll go darker. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It does. Matter. Cool, 320 watching right now. 97 likes if you're enjoying the content. Hit the like button, guys, it does help. Really, really grateful for that. This is an Aquascaper 1200. This is looking super mature now. This is an Aquascaper 600 that I actually scaped ages ago. And I think we've just been chatting about me potentially doing a, a rescape in here for Dave. Okay. Oh, we've got another piece of wood. Awesome. So same type of wood, obviously. We don't, we don't tend to mix types of wood. It doesn't look so natural. So there's coming in from behind. <laughs> oh, that is red, isn't it? Look at that. Yeah. It, makes, it makes your hands look red. It's even darker than the last piece. Yeah. I need to come around the front now. Okay, mate. I'll get out of your way. Someone's asking about peeling the labels off. Did you just do that at the end? You scrub it off with a brush. Okay. Thanks, Raji. Yeah, if you, if you didn't already know, guys, I'm starting a podcast. I've got two episodes up already. So um, yeah, it would be great if you could have a listen of the podcast, another way to consume aquascaping content, which is really exciting. Actually interviewed uh, Ray from Scape Nature this morning. I will be doing a, a podcast at some point with Dave as well, which he's really excited yeah. about. Yeah, looking forward to that. Just get this in position. Nice. I like the uh, the really fine bits. Add a bit more detail. Yeah, it's they? nice, add some details. And... I think I've smacked the camera, mate, sorry. <laughs> oh yeah, oh did you? Yeah, let's walk back into it. Oh, never mind. Well, we need to do a photo anyway now, don't we? So uh, let me just, oh, you've actually moved the lens. You knocked the lens right back. So oh, Dave. Dave, Dave, oh, no. <laughs> uh, sorry about this, guys. Did you hold that? Yeah, just, I'll just chat randomly. So yeah, check out the podcast, guys. Let me know what you think. Any feedback's appreciated, constructive criticism, how can it be improved? 
potential topics you want covering. Open to any feedback. Okay, don't touch it. <laughs> okay, let's just do a five second clip of that. Looking good already, mate. Yep. I think this is a good lesson in, in that it's really worth, I know you're in a luxury position of having loads of materials to choose from, but yeah. if you can, if, if, if you are a hobbyist, and I always recommend if any time you go to an aquascaping store, check out the hardscape collection and just, you know, just get one piece uh, and gradually build up your collection because hardscape is, as we say, is the backbone of the layout. Okay. Okay, that's that one done, mate. Let's do this one. <laughs> okay, and it looks good, doesn't it? It's, it's, yeah. It seems a lot kind of bluer, the lighting. Oh, it's because of the back lighting, back isn't lights, it? Yeah. yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, so, yeah, the Aquascaper 900 has got, uh, is it Light Ground? Is that what? Light Ground, yeah. yeah. That's quite a new company, I think, isn't it? Brand new, yeah. Yeah. So, they do this, it's similar to the ADA light screen. It's our uh, test one, so we're. You're, you're like testing it out for them? Yeah. Cool. Okay, that's that one done. So, yeah, these, what we're doing, just to give you a bit of a heads up, we're taking photos and little bits of film with each camera at each kind of important step in the process, and then the, I'll, I'll release a separate kind of step-by-step -step video. So, let's have a closer look at this beautiful hardscape, shall we? So, like I said, guys, chat amongst yourselves. Let everyone know what tanks you got going. Who's entered the? Anyone entered the ILPLC this year? Let us know in the comments. I entered. I don't know. Um, I don't know how well I'll do. I'll be lucky for top three hundred, I reckon. Yeah, could interview controversial people like Heiko Blair for the podcast. I'm not sure if he'd want to be interviewed by me. I think he blocked me on Facebook a couple of years ago. <laughs> Uh, store's looking great. So it is uh, closing time here at Aquarium Gardens. That's why we've got the, the, the shop to ourselves. Yeah, the light is a uh, Life Aqua. What's the actual model name, Dave? Uh, Prime Pro. Prime Pro by Life Aqua. Yeah, Emma, Emma would eat Heiko alive. She would just wouldn't take anything, any BS from him. It'd be quite funny to see, actually. Solar RGB tank, yeah, here we go. Which is looking good. Is the ADA 60p? Um, Morocco, I have a 28-gallon low-tech scope just doing it as a hobby and for relaxation. Perfect. Yeah, not too interested in competition. No, it should be a hobby to be enjoyed. Some people enjoy uh, the competition, some people don't. I think that's absolutely fine. Hi, Mary. Thank you. Yeah, only a couple more months to the to the book launch. Uh, Lord of, Last of the Corinthians, top three aquascapers of all time. Well, it's got to be Takashi Amano. And then for me, uh, it's hard to say. Um, I really like uh, Adam Pascella and Dave Chow. And Josh Shim as well is very good. Josh Shim. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the diorama style. Um, I do like the classic Nature Aquarium. This is looking great, Dave. Thanks. Pre-ordered my book. Thank you very much, Neil. Appreciate that. Uh, Dr. Wiggle Spank, getting ready to aquascape my first tank, a 20 gallon long. Your vids have been a huge help and inspiration. That is really great to hear. Good luck with your first scape, Dr. Wiggle Spank. That is a very interesting name you have.
Could you please walk us through the lighting systems in the shop, if that's okay? Well, um, we'll focus on the workshop for now, and then maybe we'll look at some more details around the store later. Uh, room temperature, it's probably 22? Yes, 22. 22 Celsius, not sure what that is in Fahrenheit. Uh, yeah, I could get asked this question. The, the light is Life Aqua Prime Pro. Prime Pro. So it's similar sort of style mounting system to the Twin Star, uh, but it's a lot thicker. It's got like a much thicker kind of body. Um, we've got a couple more questions. How do you make Trident Fern super dense and bushy like your tanks? Thank you. Just good light and CO2, good circulation. That's the that's the tips for Trident Fern. It's it's labelled as an easy category plant. It is quite easy to keep alive and grow. <clears throat> But to get it look super lush, you do need the good uh, lighting and CO2. Daniel Velez, hello everyone. Hope everyone is healthy and well. Enjoy your new podcast, George. Best of luck with it. Thank you very much, Daniel. So Dave's building up. Uh, I see what you're doing. You're kind of building a border. So you put in kind of cosmetic gravel. Yeah, there'll be a light coloured uh, gravel. And the front. And then at the back, you'll mound it up with soil. Yep. Perfect. And are you going to um, wedge stuff in the rocks to stop migration? Yeah, we're going to be. We're going to actually be using uh, volcano mineral. Oh, uh, okay. And that will that won't come through the rocks as easy. Yeah. But we will be putting filter floss between the rocks. Okay, perfect. Stop soil coming through. Yeah, sounds great. Still doing more rocks, or you? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's not. Yeah. He's he's loving his rock work today. Okay, I need, is there a way that we can pin a comment? Because this is about the sixth time someone's asked what the light is. So this is a, the Life Aqua Prime Pro. Um, I'm going to see if I can pin my own comment here. Can I do that? No. Can someone, Radu, can you see if you can pin a comment on the live chat? Or Jen? I'm not sure if you can, but the... If someone can, if anyone asks what the light is, if someone can just type in quickly Life Aqua Prime Pro, that'd be really helpful. <laughs> you can't actually, okay, no problem. High Dragon Gravity. I think I'll do another photo. I think I'll do a bit of photo and film while you're doing that, mate. That'll, be, that'll look good for the video. Yeah, sure. Show you guys what I'm doing. So I just do a few seconds of footage like this, and then a photo as well. And then we do the same with the other camera from a different angle. Can you? Are you going back behind it again, mate? Yeah, cool. That's perfect for this. And another thing with a photo. Stay there. Just look at the tank. Or put your hand in it for us. That's it. Pretend you're working in it. Yes, it. Perfect. Stay there for a sec. Perfect. Thanks, mate. Okay. It's looking really good, mate. Yeah, I've just cable tied the wood. Cool. What, to stop it, to keep it together? Yeah, because it was rolling around a bit, so... Okay. So Dave's just cable tied, zip tied the wood together. It's been pre-soaked. I think he's even uh, managed to put a, maybe a stone on it or so, so that's going to help weigh it down as well. Okay. So Butcher, what scape was in this 900 before now? It was a kind of... A val it was... It, had like a big, basically a mound of trident fern here, a big mound of trident fern here, and then a path in the middle, wasn't it? Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. If you go on the Facebook, um, Instagram, uh, Facebook, the Aquarium Gardens Instagram, and just go through old posts on there, you'll see what it used to look like. You'll know what I mean when I just say two huge trident fern islands. <laughs> uh, what light is that? Yeah, thanks, Jim, Jim Fullery. Uh, that's just 
Um, just huge driftwood, I think. Is it just driftwood going out of there, 1500, mate? Or is it a... Uh, Riverwood or Hornwood. Okay. Same thing. Life Aqua Pro Light unit. Yeah. Prime Pro, actually. John, <laughs> no problem. Thanks, mate. Oh, right. just got a little glimpse of your pants there, mate. Your uh, underpants, nice and green. Okay, let me know when you've finished. Have you knocked it again? <laughs> Have you? Is there a way we can lock the zoom? Because that's the most sensitive thing. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. Is that your final rocks? Are we doing a bit more? Oh, we're doing a bit more as we go along. Okay. But I think I'm going to get some substrate level loads in there now. Okay, let's go for it then. Yep. Oh, you got the... Are you going to pre-rinse it or not? Just going to be straight in and just be careful when you're filling up? Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's good to go straight in. It'll be locked in by all the soil anyway. Oh, of course, yeah, okay. So, another bit of footage. Dave's nearly finished his hardscape. Now he's going to install the substrate system. Yeah, go for it, mate. You're right. Okay, so we're using a base layer of JBL Volcano Mineral, which is basically crush, crushed lava rock. Yeah. Cool. So you're just going to put that in the scoop and then put all that behind the rocks. And this is uh, like a, a bulking agent, really, so you don't have to use so much soil. It's good for deep substrates because you can... Uh, really porous. Yeah, so um, it allows oxygen penetration. I think water can flow through it a bit easier. Yeah. Just in case you wondered what the light unit make is called. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. How, how steep are you gonna? How steep are you gonna Probably bank? A third to the half, the way up. Oh Quite really? High. That high? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Maybe probably about third actually. Third. Okay. So. Considering the plants. Then. Yeah. So about seven inches then. Sorry. About seven inches. Yeah. Six inches. Yeah. Uh, what brand is the backlight? It's a company called Light Ground. Uh, just literally brand new. So. Um, I'm not sure if there's anyone uh, selling it yet. Yeah, the gaps under the rocks, they get uh, the gaps between the rocks, they get kind of uh, clogged up with some uh, filter floss. And this, obviously, the volcano mineral also helps to kind of block the soil from reaching in front of the, the rocks. Now the substrate doesn't contain any nutrients, it's just literally a bulking agent and it's, it's got a good porous structure so it aids kind of oxygen penetration. It's like a cheap man's power sand I guess, ADA power sand, but you can use that as well. Yep. So it's like a triple layer. So JBL volcanic mineral on the bottom, then ADA power sand and then tropical aquarium soil, is that right? Yeah, all, for, all three, yeah. Nice. Uh, the, yeah, the wood does look red. I mean, it's a little bit red at the moment anyway. It's called red moor root. But the light is... Oh. I think the, I think the light was too bright for my camera. <laughs> it is a, yeah. I'm not sure on the wattage, but... I only just got the light today, so it's brand new to us. Yeah. What country is it from? It's made in Hong Kong. Okay. Yeah, it looks really good, mate. Okay. 
Awesome, so that's the first layer in. There's no point in taking any photos yet because there's no difference. So Power Sound Special now, is it the Power Sound Special? Yeah, Power Sound Special or Power Sound Advanced, it's called now. Oh, is it? So that's got the Tourmaline BC. Your, it's your... got Clear Super back to 100. And Tourmaline. Does it have Tourmaline in it? I don't know. Oh. Definitely Clear Super and back to 100. Do you remember Penac W and Panac P? Do you remember yeah, that? Yeah, I remember that. I don't think they do it anymore. No, they changed all the names. So this stuff contains nutrients, bacteria. Yep. So it's a really good start, isn't it? I think it's good for long term, for the substrate long term as well. I have, I have seen the differences. I think the substrate performs better if you've got this underneath. Okay. <clears throat> Use it in the 900 over there. And um, I think... This one? Yeah. Uh, I, the results look good. <laughs> the results kind of speak for themselves, don't they? I think it's part part of the part of the overall success, isn't it? No, I do, yeah, I do genuinely believe in this product. I think it's really good. Strong bears. Yeah. Good enough for a mine, eh? Exactly. <laughs> I don't think you can argue with any ADA products. They yeah. all do exactly what. Shit. Yeah. Four hundred and thirty five people watching. This is amazing. Okay. Happy? Yeah. Uh are we gonna soil your next or clog with floss? Doing the floss next. Floss next, cool. I'll get a picture of you um actually putting it in maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're gonna, well, no, you're going to be doing it from the front though, aren't you? I can sort of get out of the way. <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. Maybe when you do it from the side. Yeah. Cool. Start over this side first. Okay, mate. Let's do a... Uh, could you give us a pose for a minute? Yeah. Um, that's it, yeah. And try and so we can actually see the wall, that's it. Just stay there a minute, I'm going to do it on this camera. <laughs> and stay there just for five more seconds. Cool, thanks, mate. So what Dave's doing now, he's got a load of filter floss, he's tearing off smaller pieces and he's wedging it in between the rocks. And what this does, it's invisible, well after all of the substrate's been fitted, but it actually hope, well, hopefully prevents the soil from migrating from behind the rock to in front of the rock. Um, was it Jeff Sensuke that showed us this a couple of years ago? It was, yeah. yeah. And he learned it off uh, Fukada, didn't he? Yes. From, you know, the, the Grand Master. Yeah, the first time I saw someone do this was Jeff Sinsko. Yeah. I was like, what a great idea. <laughs> yeah. We actually scaped, was it this one? Uh, the Irigumi. Oh, yeah. There's an Irigumi, didn't he? Uh, like yeah. a classic Samsung. Yes. Which is a nightmare to maintain, wasn't it? Do you remember? It was very low part mass, very low yeah, part Yeah, so we used to get algae. Yeah. It's difficult. Looked great, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, someone's asking about the power sand. Uh, the Tropica soil is a complete substrate. It can be used on its own and I've had great success with it. What Dave's experienced is just marginal benefits by using the power sand as well. So longer term nutrition potentially, so you might not need to use uh, nutrition capsules so frequently. And it's, it's a lot to do with just experience and trying, trying different things out. Um, Substrates are a funny one because you can arguably grow, you know, plants in sand, you know, and people do. Um, and you know the the kind of cost 
the, the, the trade-off between cost and performance is all down to personal, you know, your personal boundaries and your and your budgets. You know, Dave's in a kind of luxury position, of course. He works in a store, so of course he's going to want to try out the different products so he can gain experience from them, and then he can actually talk about them with his customers with a sense of like credibility and experience. So, you know, I think it's. I think it's just it is what it is. You know, Dave, Dave likes using it and he's getting great results with it. I personally don't use it and I get good results, but who knows, I might get even better results if I did use it. But for me, um, the cost, the cost performance ratio at the moment is it isn't, uh, isn't for me. So the thing is with the hobby like this, it's a lot of it is down to individual taste, individual budgets. You know, this isn't a cheap system. Um, the tank, the cabinet, the hardscape, the lighting, filtration, CO2, hardscape, plants. You're looking at, is it, can I say, is it going to put people off? No, no. Oh, it's best to be honest, isn't it? Yeah, best to be honest. So the whole, yeah. this whole thing will cost in the region of... Somewhere between three, 1500 and 2000 pounds. Yeah. And maybe a bit more if you yeah. have better lighting. Yeah. So you're looking about 3000 bucks maximum, anything between two and 3000 US dollars. I know most of you guys watching are from the States. You can do the maths if you're from the UK. Um, it's not a cheap system. I've done a few of these for, for private clients now, probably between eight and 12 individual private clients using the entire kind of system that you see here. And it is, you know, you're talking a four, you know, a four figure sum. So, but it's a beautiful system. Uh, if you are on a strict budget, obviously you can do something much smaller, lower energy, something like this, and you can gradually kind of work your way up. Um, but yeah, everyone's got their own budgets, everyone's got their own tastes. Oh, a few more rocks, looking good. Plug in the gap. <clears throat> so it's it's quite limestone heavy isn't it this rock what what do you what's your kind of take on uh, the increase in the hardness and the ph yeah my take on that is well around here we've got quite hard water already so i think the effects on it are minimal um to what we've already got to deal with with our water so we don't worry about it personally mm. i think if you're using soft or ro water Maybe it's something to consider. Yeah, the impact's bigger, isn't it? Yeah. And you're doing large frequent water changes. Yeah. Which is going to obviously replace, you know, it's going to reset. Yeah, any, resets it every any, week. Any kind of hardness build up anyway. We did, we're talking sort of 70, 80% a week. Yeah. Do you really that much? 70, 80%? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I've started to do running water changes. So yeah. sometimes it's over 100%. Yeah. Sometimes we'll do, um, sometimes we'll do double water changes on, on a very small tank. Yeah. Like the one. Just like literally flushes everything out, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 yeah water changes is another topic. I'm going to do a whole uh, podcast dedicated to water changes. Yeah, there's some, some people are asking about the rocks on the on the glass. I've never had an issue with this. Uh, some of you may have seen my cichlidscape. That's got a lot of rocks just on the bare glass. You know, glass is surprisingly strong. It's just it's just very brittle. So you just have to be really careful when you're actually physically placing it to start with. But once it's there, you can almost guarantee it's going to be perfectly fine. So, are you just using the one bag of this, would you say? Uh, at least two. At least two, okay, cool. So, in fact, I'll get another picture of you doing this, mate, if you don't mind. Yeah, cool. So if you just sort of go mid, I'll try and get you pour it. I'll, I'll put, film you pouring it and then I'll do a still. I'll ask you to kind of move. Let me know when you're ready. Yeah, okay, go for it. Go, yeah. Hit the like button, guys, if you like this kind of action. <laughs> it's looking good, mate. If you're going to kind of stay like that with it pouring, I'm going to get a still of you, yeah. hopefully. Okay, so I start pouring now. 
Keep going, pour, 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 pour. Yay, perfect. Look at that. That's what we're talking about. Uh, and you can do another bag in a minute. Yeah, do you want me to just do a little? Yeah, do a little bit more so I can get it on this camera. Okay, let me know. Yeah, okay, okay, pour now. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect, keep pouring. Just for a few seconds. Yeah, perfect, mate, and keep. Have you thought of a name for the scape yet? No, no. I usually like, I sort of think about that a bit. Corona, Co time. Corona Cove. <laughs> it's got a ring to it. Yeah. Uh, New Mexico Aquatics, Little Bobby, is it okay if I share this link? I already did, it's probably okay. Yeah, I think it's okay. <laughs> yes, thank you for sharing. We appreciate that, mate. Hope you and the wife are well. Do enjoy your uh, Facebook activities. COVID Cove sounds better. Yeah, that's true. Project 19. That's what you should call it. Project 19, nice. Uh, night at the Aquatic Museum, why do an even larger water change on a small tank? Um, that's a good question. I, I think it's just because it's so easy and the more water changes the better in my experience. What do you think Dave? Um, it's mainly because I run out of water when I'm trying to clean the tank. Oh, it's actually like, a practical thing. Yeah, it's a practical thing. So when you're trying to clean the substrate before you know it, the tank's empty. Yeah. Um, so we, do a, we fill it up again and then do another water change and carry on cleaning the substrate. Yeah. And you never had any issues with livestock or anything like that? With no, as changes? long as we're dechlorinating the water, we use CKM Prime. Yeah. Um, and as long as the water's up to temperature. Cool. So we use a bit hot, a bit of cold, and the fish love it. Fish love the clean water. Awesome. Well, that's a nice photo behind you, Dave. Who's that? Can you take that uh, photo? Some, some guy I know. That looks a familiar signature. He's all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's looking great, really, really nice. Okay, MD Fish Tanks is here, everyone. Nice to see you, mate. Yeah, people are asking why the wood's looking so red. It's, it's the, the wood's a little bit red anyway, and then the, it's just the lighting. It's got such a high peak in the red spectrum that it's really bringing out the red in the, in the, uh, in the wood. It'll go brown over time. Yeah, it'll go much darker brown, won't it? But um, yeah, very lucky to live near Aquarium Gardens. And what I'll probably try to do, in fact, I will try to do, is, is regular updates of this scape. Um, Dave's always very generous at letting me film in here, which is always a, a lovely thing to do with these beautiful inspirational displays. So, a um, bit of a story. Uh, Dave and I go back, what, well, must be four years now. Yeah, about four and a half years. So, um, I reached out to you to potentially sponsor the UCAP's aquascaping experience, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, so, I don't know if any of you guys watching went to that, 2016 in Daventry. Uh, Dave was there, he sponsored the event. And you weren't, you weren't established that long then, were you? No, we were going um, about two years since I opened the business and the shop had only recently opened in that, what, October. So really yeah. new. Really yeah. And really then you new. kind of, and then you, didn't you see me running one day? Yeah, I saw you. No, <laughs> yeah, it was really weird because I didn't obviously know where you lived or anything. And then one day I was driving to work and there was George <laughs> <laughs> running away up the hill. <laughs> um, so I went, on, I went onto Facebook and tried to, I thought, I thought, oh God, he only lives in Huntingdon. It's <laughs> just down yeah, the road. Yeah, it? Yeah. So it was so, so weird. It was, yeah. And then um, I, I started doing sort of tank maintenance, didn't I, quite regularly for you? Yeah. Uh, and then I got so busy and then you got really busy. So you got more staff. And then we've kind of grown together, I think. I think it's been lovely. Yeah. Really, really good to, to kind of lift yeah. each other up. Um, Dave's just about, how many, you're near 100,000 on Instagram, aren't you? Yeah, well, that's, that's amazing, yeah. yeah. And I think exclusive uh, news, Dave's going give to do a giveaway. Yes. 
Yeah. A million pounds credit note. <laughs> no. We we'll watch your space so, though. Yeah. We, uh, and check, check. Ideas, but not. Yeah. And check out Dave on Instagram if you don't already. Aquarium, uh, at Aquarium Gardens. Really good account, and you can see why you all these beautiful displays everywhere. Hey, Piotr, how are you doing? Oliver Grand, loving the new podcast, George. When's the next one being released from Teescape? Um, good question, actually. Um, I might try and do one this, another one this week. They're really easy to produce. I think from start to finish, I can get the whole kind of podcast done in two hours from, from kind of recording it to publishing it. So it's a lot quicker than uh, making YouTube videos. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. Yeah, my podcast is available on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple, and um, what's the other one? Uh, Overcast, and also just the Anchor FM link as well. You can view it from, from the Anchor FM app or website. That's an Anchor, as in the ship anchor, uh, .fm. Uh, the moss in here is a vesicularra Christmas, so Christmas moss. Uh, Dave's already tied it on with some ADA uh, moss cotton. Is it green then, Dave, the moss cotton? It is, isn't it? It's green. Yeah, that's why you can't see it. It's great. Uh, the rocks are a black uh, mini landscape rock, so they're similar to Siriu, but they're a darker colour. I think they've been acid washed. So Dave's got even more rocks, just because he hasn't got enough yet. <clears throat> 507 people watching. This is epic. I think this is the biggest live stream I've had. Thanks, Dave. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure, Dave. Don't break the tank. Don't drop anything. I'm just praying that we don't get floating wood. Uh, the amount of times I've had that. I think I'm going to do some glue on it as well. Yeah, sure. I would. Yeah, it's not worth the risk. So if you're enjoying the stream, guys, hit the like button. It really does help us. And we've got 500 people watching already. Actually, I think the red the red's kind of grown on me. I know it's not going to last long term. No, I think no. I'm just used to it now. Will the moss do okay that close to the light? Um, yes, I think. That Dave's strict kind of water change regime and stocking with plenty of algae eaters from the start. Um, controlling, you know, lots of healthy, fast plant growth at the beginning. Got some fast growing weeds in there to start with, with a Heteranthera zostifolia. Are you using that, Dave? Yeah, that's just a supporting Just plant. a helping plant, isn't Only it? Only for the first two months. Yeah. yeah. I'll take it out after two months. So, uh, is there light controllable, people are asking? Yes. You've got, um, you've got a button on there, which has got four presets. Um, Light intensities. Can't quite reach them. Yeah. So it's like 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100%. Yeah. I've only had this today, so I've only just worked it out. Oh, okay. And there's a Wi Fi uh, app you can connect to as well. Okay, cool. So there's Wi Fi and you can control it by the actual unit itself. Yes. Cool, man. Yeah. What light is that? Oh, I can't believe someone's asked me that again. <laughs> it's the Life Aqua. Prime Pro. Start telling, Steve. Do you remember when I used to post my photos of the 1200 with the castles? Every single host used to be, what lights are those? I used to even write it. I used to even write it in the post, and people used to say, what lights? Still like new followers, George. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's looking really good, mate. I'm excited to see it planted. It looks great already. Ready for another photo in a minute. Do you want to um, pretend you're playing with the rocks and I'll get a bit of video and a bit of photo action? Hey, AD, good to see you, mate.
Yay, got a super chat. Oh, thanks Josh, ATX, I missed you. Thank you very much. Can I just confirm what the light lights they are? No. If anyone wants to know what lights they are, they've got to drop a super chat next time. <laughs> Uh, can you play the rocks again, yeah. just for this clip here? That's it, that looks good. Nice one, perfect mate, thank you. <laughs> what, you don't kick that tripod? Yeah, Dave's already kicked it twice. So God knows what the final footage is going to be like. Uh, I'm just see if I've got any coffee left. Oh, I have as well. Nice. Shout out to uh, my supporters, Awaze, for this epic Yeti mug. I don't know if you guys have heard of Yeti, but they're uh, really, really nice flasks. So. And I've got my bulletproof coffee in here, so give me some energy. I've been up since 3 o'clock this morning for some reason. I was at, I was at Ray's Escape Nature in Norwich, and... Uh, we went to bed at half ten and then woke up at three and couldn't get back to sleep again. I think I was too excited about editing the podcast. So you're still stuffing... Uh... You can't have enough. <laughs> can, you, can you just undo that for me? Yeah. Sorry, mate. Sorry, guys. This, this is the uh, things we have to do when we're running a bit low on energy. Ian Sutherland says, top work, Dave. Thanks, Ian. Uh, cheers, Ian. What was used again for attaching the plants to the wood? It's ADA moss cotton. It's just like a dark green cotton thread. Uh, I'll try and get a close-up for you, but it, it's so... I mean, that's why it's green, so it's almost invisible. But yeah, I think you can just see it there, hopefully. Thanks, James. Appreciate that. Super chat. James Dyer says, thanks for helping me out with this tank. Cool. Oh, yeah. Dave says, cheers. Thumbs up, friend. <laughs> <laughs> and are you ready for plants, do you think? Yeah, it's got this more soil. Mm. Maybe it's some soil powder. Oh, okay. Oh, for Tropica? Yep. Nice. Not missing anything Give you a... Ooh, friends. Aquascape friends. Oh. Drop my microphone again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, mate. It's not amateur hour. Okay. That's me. Sorry, guys. Oh, this is cool from the back, isn't it? That's what the 1500. Look at these stems. That's insane. Drop us a like, guys, if you like this view here. The light ground are watching. Hey. We love your back. Oh, backlight in the light ground. Thank you so much. How long's the shop been running now, Dave? Uh, four and a half years. Four and a half years. Online, six and a half. Cool. Greetings from Canada. Hello, Canada. Stay awake for us, George. Yeah, sorry, guys. I'm like, yeah, I've been awake since three, and then driven a couple of hours from Norwich. That's all good. I love going in. Going in. We're going in. No need to get I need to get, we need to swap, don't we? 
So, uh, is this the final bag of Tropica soil? Yeah, so this is Tropica soil powder. So we use this as a top layer. This is great, especially for delicate rooted plants, like the most tissue cultures, because they start off so small, they tend to have more delicate roots. Aesthetically as well, I think it's nicer, isn't yeah, it, the powder? The scale and just, yeah. the, just the look of it. Yeah. Yes, yeah, a good question. Um, Ants France, can you give advice on doing a Dutch scape without hard scape? Um, not really, because I've, I've, I mean, I've tried it twice. I've not, I wouldn't say I've ever succeeded with it, so I'm not the best person to ask. Um, there is a great article on the UCAPS forum, ukaps.org slash forum. And if you go on the Aquatic Gardens Association um, aquascaping contest kind of showcase gallery, you'll see some great Dutch entries on there. Uh, thanks for the super chat, guys. Really appreciate it. Um, really generous of you. Evening, Fish Cove Aquatics. Okay, take it. That's Duncan. Looking good, mate. Uh, so someone's just asked if I'd ever open my own shop or my own brand of items. No is the simple answer to that. Um, potentially have my own branded stuff, but the, the market's pretty saturated with most items covered by a lot of brands now. So the thing is, if you if you if you start launching your own brand of stuff, it has to be has to have a USP, and to have a USP, you kind of need to almost design it from the ground up and you know look at manufacturing yourself. And I just haven't got the resources or the energy for that kind of thing. You know, my focus is, is creating content, whether that's through writing, photography, video, or now podcasting. Um, that's where I get my, you know, my passion from is, is creating content so people can hopefully learn about aquascaping. A, a shop, opening a shop is great, and I think it, it's something that I would probably enjoy doing, um, but I think I enjoy being a creator more than a kind of sales guy. Um, and also, you know, some of my best friends uh, are aquatic store owners, so I wouldn't really want to be competing with these guys, <laughs> especially as one uh, that I'm with right now is like literally three miles from my home. So I think I'd be a hard push to compete with uh, an amazing store like this one. Yeah, you've got to play to your strengths, haven't you? Yeah. And I think that one of the hardest things is figuring out what your strengths are. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I didn't discover what mine was until I was about 30 years old. <laughs> so, I think Lord knows what I'd be, where I'd be if I discovered aquascaping as a teenager. Um, yeah, an interesting one, but here we are where we are. A middle-aged aquascaper here. 44 in two weeks. Yeah. Mid 40s, there we go. There we go, Jen. Thanks for that um, about the Dutch. I knew you'd be uh, keen on that one. Vin Cutty, building a Dutch aquascape in the last three issues of the Aquatic Gardener. I recommend that, it's an amazing publication. Great design. Good, mate. What fish are going in the scape? I normally don't think about the fish until it's all done. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I even like, even, I, I, I love waiting. Do you know, I actually enjoy the waiting because it gives me time to yeah. think about what I want to stock, make sure it's appropriate for the water chemistry, for the size of the tank, for the shape of the tank, for the style of the scape. Because no matter how much you plan, it always ends up being a little bit different and you just yeah. go with the flow of it as well, so. Yeah. Plants are, going to, plants are going to be different to normal. Yeah, I'm excited to see the plants. It's a bit of a, you did send me the list um, when you when you communicated with Tropica, but I can't remember. I don't think I read it properly, if I'm honest. If I was a uni student and wanted to scape, what would I do? Uh, it depends on your budget, really, how much spare space you've got. Um, I mean, I'm guessing as a student, you might be a little bit financially... Uh, you know, 
challenged with the university fees. I don't know if you're from the UK or wherever you're from, but um, I'd always I'd, I'd like to start beat tank or 60 centimeter tank. It's going to cost you less to set up, less to actually maintain. Maintenance times are going to be reduced. You don't need as many plants, so that's going to be cheaper. Maintenance, you know, like I said, maintenance um, and space. It's not going to take up so much space. And if you're a university, living space could be um, limited, I guess. So, yeah, someone's saying start off with a big tank if you can. Big tanks do have much, you know, do have advantages. You've got a more stable water chemistry. You've got uh, less fluctuation in temperature. You've got more options for hardscape and plant choices. But, you know, that isn't always an advantage, especially as a beginner, because a big tank can be a little bit kind of overwhelming because there's so much you can do with it. I think maybe starting smaller might be, um, might be a bit easier for, for a beginner. Uh, fish with Max, love your work, mate. Started my hobby with you from you. That's great to hear. Uh, Neil Woodward says, great shop and great friendly staff at Crown Gardens. Apart from Dave, he's a bit rude. <laughs> I'm, I'm just joking. <laughs> It's looking really good. Let's check out that view there. Hit the like button, guys, if you enjoy this view. Uh, do I watch interested in Ivan Mikolji's work? Absolutely. I know he's got his book coming out. More rocks? Yep. You're trying to use all the rocks up? <laughs> oh, Challenge. That's really good. Any good epiphytic plants to put on immersed driftwood? Um, mosses are good. They tend to, you get the capillary reaction from the water coming up the, the wood, so it tends to stay quite moist and humid. Um, other other parts that do, oh shh, I've just knocked the tripod now. Ah, oh, annoying. Sorry guys, I'm gonna have to just square this up. That's better. Okay, stay there, something. Do you want to um, just fiddle with a rock just for a sec? That's it. Just do that for five seconds. I'm, I'm yeah. Someone's saying I thought Dave would be filming and I'm be escaping, but this this is better because. You know, Dave's arguably a stronger scaper than me, or we're probably similar standard, I would suggest. And it's Dave's store. You know, he's obviously enjoying creating his own work in his own store. And uh, Dave would probably agree that I'm better at running commentary than he might be. Yep. And uh, I'm arguably better with um, holding a camera, potentially. So I think it works best this way. I think it's, um, I'm really, com really comfortable with it. I don't need to scope anymore. I've done a few over the nice years. See you come back and do, do one. Do yeah, yeah. Just, uh, just stay there a minute. Just stay still. Yep. Perfect. Let me just do a bit more video. Like, just do some action now, like you're doing. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So Dave just mentioned. Um, and hopefully come back and do this, redo this scape at some point. So let me know in the, in the chat, guys, what would you like to see in here? I'm trying to convince Dave to do black water in here, but he's not a big fan, so, um, yeah, I'm not going to force the issue, of course. But I think something, because we've got, you've got most kind of styles covered in here, haven't you? You've got Irigumi, you've got non-CO2, you've got kind of jungle, you've got like a valley, you've got Philippe's one, an island here. I don't know. 
So I'm going to try something a bit different. Yeah, and that's what I'm trying to do with this scope is the plants are going to be different, and that's yeah. the wood. So we're going to use different plants. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll get a different vibe. I wonder if we make it like super beginner friendly because I'm really good at those types of scapes. <laughs> it's your, your tank. I really like the original, one of the original ones we did in there, the classic. It's probably, that's probably it's that one. one here. Yeah, that one there. There's a photo of it here. This is one of the first ones I did for Dave. This is a photo from it here. It's probably been one of the most popular scapes <clears throat> we've had in here for sure. I'm trying to recreate that, but a bit more advanced, maybe. Yeah. Use some like brand new Buca Philandra species and you know, like the really tiny Anubius. Get like 50 pots of Anubius mini coin. Slow, yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, Just like yeah. completely like use up all of Tropica's stock. <laughs> Radu, check out the stock list <laughs> for us. Let us know how many mini coin we can get. I'd love that though. You know, you're using like all nano varieties of each species. Yeah. So, you know, we've got mini coin, you've got, did Denelay still do that? Um, do they still do that with a philandra mini needle leaf? Yeah, they do that. Do they still do that? I think so, yeah. That's really cool. Um, what else would we use? Really small epiphyte plant. What do you think to that Bulbitis deformis? Do you think, uh, is, that, is that gross up there properly? Yeah, it does. You have to give it time though and a lot of CO2. It goes, it goes black. Yeah. When you first put it in. But then it trans eventually transforms a new growth. Super high CO2, super high and light as well. Grows, grows well near the top. Oh, okay. Interesting. Um, and then there's there's some quite rare sort of uh, Java fern varieties that are really tiny, aren't there? Yeah. I mean, I can <coughs> see some more different types, actually. Yeah. Like a really sort of mini one. Yeah. Aquasabi do a lot of rare stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I like I like aquasabi. Yeah, they're good. It's looking really good. Right. Now let's... I'm a, I'm a bit worried about my battery life on my camera. How long have we been running now? Quite more batteries. Sixty-seven. No, I'm not. I'm sorry. On my phone. I think I can go for t probably two and a half hours. Going for <coughs> an hour. Okay, I'm fine then. Yeah. Uh, let's know what you think in the comments, guys, so far in the chat. What do you reckon to Dave's workmanship? Someone said awful earlier. I was very offended. I think they're being sarcastic, hopefully. If we can get 400 likes by the end of the stream, I will do 50 push-ups with Dave filming in my underpants. We're going to get loads of dislikes now. Yeah. I remember when, uh, when Florence was a little, she used to lie on my back and I used to do... She used to love it, she'd giggle. Uh, which football team do I support? I don't actually support a team. I know Dave support you're Arsenal, aren't you? Arsenal fan, yeah. Yeah, yeah and my stepsons are Arsenal as well. So. On the FA Cup. Yeah. Everyone's saying they love the rock work, Dave. It's good. It's actually really nice rock, isn't it? That dark texture it's looks lovely, really good. I think, yeah. Are these moss cotton gloves? No. Oh. Sad, sorry. Your Yuri's <laughs> will cry. Sorry, Yuri's. Just a normal glove. Uh, little Bobby, my wife wants to see that. Yeah, I'm sure she would. I'd li like for her to see it too. <laughs> Dave looks very good. Cheers, John. Are them mosses not going to dry out? No. Dave's a pro. They'll just, yeah, they'll be fine. Okay. But good shout. We don't want our plants drying out. You do need to miss them occasionally. Oh, Dave, I didn't tell you, I've got two new frogs today. Frogs. For my boy over there. Yeah, they're tiny, but I, I'm, I've had some reports saying that they, they're a bit big, but because they're, they're, they're just juveniles at the moment, I'm going to probably get them a bigger home eventually when they, when they do get bigger. Have you them yet? No. George and Dave? Okay. 
Copy that now. There's quite there's a there is some famous Georgian Daves. Is it is it Two Wham? Names? What was Wham? No, it's Georgian Andy, wasn't it? Yeah. Call him Georgian Andy. No, Georgian Dave. Georgian Dave. I'm gonna call him Georgian Dave. I'm not sure if, how Emma would think about that. But I think one's I think they're male and female, so uh, I don't yeah. Probably you can be the female. George is a kind of female name, I guess. Wham, yeah, George and Andy. It's a bit wham in here. <laughs> dad jokes. God, I'm getting so bad at my dad joke. Florence had a party at our house with all her mates, oh, yeah. with her 16-year-old mates, and I was trying to be funny, like cracking a couple of dad jokes, but I think I just ended up embarrassing the... Yeah, they laughed. No, I think they laughed out of nervous respect. <laughs> Florence was just like cringing. People are um, people are really cross that you're an Arsenal supporter and they've like stopped. It's going to be they said they're going to stop their custom with you. We lost half of our viewers. <laughs> Everyone's dropped off. Yeah, we've only got three people watching now. <laughs> so what are you doing now, Dave? Is that Uraru glue? Uraru is pro. Yeah, pro Huru, JBL. Yeah, and we're using that. And we're using that to uh, glue the woods down to the rocks nice. so they don't float. And also when you go to clean the wood, it doesn't just fall over. So it's going to be solid in position. Nice. Normally takes a couple of hours to dry, but it'll be fine. <laughs> Good stuff, mate. Yeah. Because it is waterproof as well, isn't it? So it you, is, can, yeah. you can actually fill the tank up. You can, yeah. As long as it's tacky. Yeah. I think you'll be fine, mate. Jim Foolery, hey, I'm on lockdown here in Southern California. I'm watching in my underpants. I don't blame me. I do a lot of stuff in my underpants. I would get told off by my wife who was just walking around the house in my underpants all the time. <laughs> Speaking of underpants, Dave, I can see your green undercrackers. <laughs> I've chosen the wrong colour today. You don't stand out like a sore thumb. I know you did. You should have got grey ones. <laughs> Think about my underwear when that's fitted. There you go, mate. I just realised, Dave, the um, the scape, the scape that was there before that one was that Philippe's one, wasn't it? Not the two massive mounds of Trident fern. Was that from that one? Yeah, no, we've got I've got the wrong way around, there. didn't I? Yeah, apologies, guys. Um, if you remember at the beginning of the stream, someone asked what was in here before. It wasn't the two massive Trident Fern Islands. It was uh, Philippe's old scape. But Philippe's scape lives on in this one, so it's all good. I chatted with Balash this morning on FaceTime. Did you? Yeah. Um, all right. Yeah, he's good. I'm going to go over and do a beginner workshop. Yeah. Where are you going? Well, when we're allowed to travel oh, again. Course, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But they're, oh, this store looks amazing. Yeah, it's incredible. Not that I've been, but I really want to go as well. Really, really want to go. On the bucket list for soon yeah. as can, really. Oh, Stephen's called me out for owning money live on the live stream. That's nice. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> Steve, oh. Steve of Gold. Oh, right. He maintained my tanks for me when I was away, and I, th I think I still owe him money for it. <laughs> I mean, you know I'm good for it, mate. Just keep, needs to remind me. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. Since no one has asked in a while, the light is a life Aqua Prime Grove 900. No problem, Stephen. You, you've um, you've been at, replaced by. Uh, oh, I just touched my other tripod. George. Ah, <laughs> cross. Where's the knee now? I keep one. I keep, it's because it's walking. I'm walking backwards. I'll have to. Okay. I'll have to go and square this up. Sorry, guys. 
so I need to move it right a bit, don't I? It's embarrassing. Yeah, it's come quite a bit to the right, I think. more to the right sorry about this guys this is really annoying you should put like an electric fence around the tripods yeah. and only do it the once uh, so what you do now spray and that'd be a good good op good opportunity for a little video clip mate keep going yeah. nice do the same with this one now. Keep going. Perfect. So substrates in, rocks and wood are obviously in. Rocks are all kind of um, blocked up, hopefully. So are you going to do the planting before the foreground? Foreground, I'm going to probably put the sand in. Next? At the, end. At the right at the end, okay. Yeah. yeah, but it's like a nice finishing touch, isn't it? Yeah, because otherwise you'll have all the plants and stuff landing on it. Yeah. Yeah, John Starkey's excited to come and see you soon, I think. Oh, great. Was he, was he getting a 60p off you? Yeah, 60p. Nice. Um, Anthony says, do you guys use tap water? If so, is it an issue with the rocks leaching minerals? Uh, no, we did talk about this earlier. This is um, actually the harder the water you are, the less impact any, any leaching of the minerals is going to take. So um, combined with the large frequent water changes, any kind of boosting of hardness or pH isn't an issue really. There's another question as well. No, it's not my scape. This is very much Dave's scape and, and, the, um, and the store's scape. I'm just the cameraman today. Yeah, do at the end, mate. Ballas Nana? Yeah. Yeah, it's the only one really. One is Spiralist Tiger's quite nice. Yeah. It's just too fast. Yeah. We always used to take the mickey out of Ballas, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. Even though it's your best seller. <laughs> <laughs> Jungle Val. Jungle Val. Rabbits. So Dave's prepared all these earlier. He's sealed them up to stop them from drying out. <clears throat> I can see some crips. I can see some bucophalandra. See some lagenendra. Let's just hold these up to the light. People can get a really good look at these beautiful plants. Please check out these beauties. All fresh from Tropica. Um, these come in fresh this week. Yeah, fresh this week. So. Yeah, these plants are, you know, are kind of supplied for this project today from Tropica. So most of you will know that I'm a huge fan of Tropica. In fact, I, I do a lot of work for them these days, uh, producing at the moment two videos a week. So check out the Tropica Aquarium Plants YouTube channel as well if you want to see uh, more kind of educational style content, I would say, rather than entertaining. Um, my channel's a bit more of a mix, hopefully. Whereas the Tropica is obviously very much a professional outfit. Okay, here we've got some Hygrophila pinnata feeder. Is this from the 1-2 Grow? Yeah. Nice. I like the 1-2 Grow because it's got the colour already, hasn't it? Yeah. You, when you buy the immersed pots, they're a bit it's, a bit woody, aren't they? Yeah. A bit kind of dry. It takes a while for them to get yeah. looking nice and tank. And what have got here, Ricardia? Ricardia camera dry failure. How are you going to attach that? that well, I'm just going to lay that on the pads 
Oh, and let it grow. Oh, and I then see. Go on from there. Perfect. Um, what else have you got in here then? Oh, is that a bulb? A lily? Oh, is it a Aponegita? Which one? Mandagascrensis? No, the Longi, Longi Longifolia. Poop. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Good. Exciting. <clears throat> right, Are you doing apophytes first? Yeah. Nice. Get them in first. Get a bit of uh, focal point going. Yeah, so I'm going to whack over here. He's going to, cool, I'll come back. Let's have a bit of a wide angle view for everyone. We'll get a, when you've done the Nubius, give me a shout, mate, and I'll get a, just a quick photo and a video of it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, thanks, Mary. I really enjoy doing the um, the, the Tropica plant profile videos because I actually uh, get, I have to usually have to research a lot on them, about, especially about the background and the history of the plant. And um, yeah, it's a nice process to go through research. Write the article, write the voiceover, do the voiceover and edit the video. Uh, Fertilisation routine for these beautiful tanks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, uh, you use TNC complete? Yes. Yeah. So T TNC complete uh, every day. Three times a day, split over seven days. Yeah. Three times the weekly dose. Yeah. Split over seven days. Yeah. Um, but all all fertilised in the same manner, obviously, depending on the size of the tank. And to an extent, you know, if it's more light or more plant mass, you'll need more fertilisers. We actually do, um, we actually do uh, triple, we do triple the dose and split that over the seven days for like, the, while the scape's growing in. Yeah. And then when the plants are bigger, we actually go triple double. Oh wow! So it's a lot of fertilizer compared to yeah. what's on the packet. Yeah. But we do as it gets bigger, and yeah, so we're okay. doing five mil per fifty mil every day. Yeah. Awesome. Um, my new book actually does go into a lot about how much to dose, when to dose, what to dose in different size and any kind of energy level tanks. So be sure to pre-order your book on aquascaping from Amazon. Available right now. Done it. Have you, you pre-ordered it? Yeah. Have you? Yeah, I need to sort out the wholesale thing because we need to get a, a UK or European yeah. kind of distributor, really. Because at the moment, it's, it gets printed in China and then flown to the States and then potentially flown all the way back this way. So I think it's a bit inefficient, really. Yeah. Ideally, get it straight over from the printers. I'll send a load my way, this way. Yeah. Thanks to everyone that's pre-ordered their copy. There's a few people watching that will get a signed copy sent to them. They know who they are. They're in the circle of trust. <laughs> I did think of a, um, a really cool like, aquascaping group name, Scapers United. Oh, nice. Sounds a bit like a football team though, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it does. It's pretty cool, though. Scapers United. 66 in two weeks, John Starkey. So a little treat to myself. Don't blame you, mate. You deserve it. You might have seen these Tropica art prints up here as well. These are beautiful. You should be able to order these from your local Tropica dealer. You can buy the frames from, um, you know, hardware stores or some kind of retailer. Um, but they do look really, really lovely. These kind of drawings, watercolours. This is one of my favourite ones. Uh, the book is coming out in November in the United States and then by the time it gets shipped to the UK it might be December so hopefully in time for Christmas. Mark wants a signed copy? Yeah maybe mate. 
I think you deserve one, Mark, after all the super chats you give me every week. <laughs> it's the least I can do. Uh, how much would this entire setup be? Uh, I think, what did you say, Dave, between? Uh, pounds between 1,500 and 200. So you're looking at about 2,000 pounds or about two, two and a half thousand. All in. Uh, US dollars. That's for everything, though. Uh, everything that you see. The filtration, obviously the tank cabinet, lighting, CO2, substrate, hard to cope plants. It's not a cheap hobby, you know, when you're, when you're dealing with, we talked about this at the beginning of the stream, but if you've joined recently, you know, we talked about people have got different budgets, um, different expectations, different tastes, and, you know, this is just one, you know, this is at the upper extreme of what you can, what you can spend, but I think you'll agree, you know, you get what you pay for, it's, it's a great quality system, it's a proven quality system you know this kind of this kind of the the whole process that we're doing right now or Dave's doing right now you know Dave and I have done this you know dozens and dozens of times it's a proven way of working you know the, the all the equipment's proven uh, the methods have been proven you know everything that we're using it all absolutely definitely works and can be repeated over and over again so might be a little bit more expensive, but at least you know you, you can be guaranteed to get excellent results. So all of the scapes here are all have all been set up and maintained with the same kind of methodologies and techniques. The equipment might be slightly different. You might have different light units. You know, we've got Twin Star, we've got O and F, we've got a ADA, we've got Life Aqua uh, Pitcher. But you know, the main principles remain the same. Looks a bit underexposed now, that's weird. Let's whack up that ISO a bit. Ooh. Seconds. Twenty one seconds to go. So totally yeah, you know, and I get tired and I just start rambling and talking rubbish. Yep. Sorry. Uh, forget that I've got 563 people listening to everything I say. <laughs> yeah, I just blame, blame the sleep deprivation. That's fine. Oh, Dave, you're in the way. Your bum's in the way. Your green pants. Uh, just uh, that's cool. Just look at the tank for a minute. That's it. More coffee. Yeah, we can't. There's no one here to make us coffee. What sort of place is this? It's self-service. Yeah. Can you um, mind out? Can you move out? Can you kind of pretend you're doing it if you stand to one side and get your hand over? Yeah, perfect. Just pretend you can, and then I'll just get the photo, and then you can do what you really want to do. <laughs> Perfect. It's taking shape really nicely, mate. Yeah. Yeah, cheers. <coughs> Pleased. Pleased. It's like my slogan. Kane Langford says, is my scape still in the dojo? Does that ring any bells? Uh, might be, yeah. Uh, yes. No, I think that was somebody else's. Is it? Quite possibly. How red is the wood in real life? It does look really red. It's going to get much darker. Um, yeah. It's not so red when you kind of come in and look at it from a distance, is it? I think the camera makes it. The, yeah, the cam the iPhone is really bad at picking out reds, actually. But it, we know it's going to get through the tripod. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm knocking both over. Simultaneously, yeah. Right, so a bit more grease, and I need some glue. 
Uh, can we please stabilise the camera? No, I haven't got a, a gimbal, so sorry. I'm trying my best. Um, some people wear gloves when they're scraping when they deal with super glue, just to stop their fingers getting stuck together. Simple as that. Watch my fingers, sorry, yes, yeah, my fingers going over the lens. Ooh. So what are you doing now? Just gluing more. Oh, you're gluing the uh, Buca Valandra? I've got Buca Valandra red. Nice. So, uh, close up of that. Have you punctured the thing? Yeah. No, you haven't. <laughs> got twisted it on now. There we go. You can feel it now. There we go. Squeeze, there we go, perfect. So this is Cyan Acrylite gel based super glue. Uh, we like the gel type because it doesn't run like uh, liquid can. And do you tend to glue the rhizome or the roots or a bit of both? Uh, the rhizome mainly. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you get the roots as well, it's as long as it's stuck down. Just don't glue the leaves. No. How do you cover the white marks? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the white marks will eventually get covered, hopefully, by the plant itself, the growth itself. Another top tip is actually to glue a little bit of moss around the white marks as well, but obviously only a tiny bit of glue so you don't create more white marks. But if you only use a small amount and you're quite careful, then you shouldn't see any white marks anyway. I think Dave's done a grand job. In this instance, the plant's just covering it anyway, so... Yeah. What will we do to fight diatoms in the early stages? Well, big water changes, uh, lots of fast growing weeds in there. So we've got some helping plants going in there, like the Heteranthera zostifolia. That helps to uh, combat any early algae issues. And then um, I think Dave will probably add Amano shrimp and Nearite snails near the beginning yeah. as well. Yeah, about three, two, three weeks of Amano shrimps. Yeah. So it's a combination of these large frequent water changes, the healthy plant growth. Uh, this will ensure you don't get any nuisance algae at the beginning. One thing I did find, that's with the 900 that we did earlier this year or in December, was we didn't, have actually, have, didn't actually have that algae bloom. We didn't have any um, diatoms. Yeah. We had green, we had a phase of green, but we didn't get any brown. Um, whether that's down to power sand and heavy planting, getting it going quicker. It's got to be the magic of ADA, hasn't it? Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, bet, I generally think it had. We'll find out what we'll do with this tank as well, aren't we? So. Yeah. It's looking nearly good. I kind of just want to put the camera on a tripod and sit down and watch you. <laughs> have a beer. <laughs> have, a, have a beer. Yeah, we're going to use tap water in here. All the tanks in here are all just uh, hard tap water. We live in a very hard tap. Uh, we live in a very hard water area here in Cambridgeshire. I'll do another, uh, just a quick pitch of you doing the boost, mate. Uh, if you can't come around the back again, that was really good. You just pretend you're doing something. Or well, you can actually do it if you want. Yeah, yeah. You, you good? Yeah, I'm filming right now. Okay, keep going. I'm just going to take a quick picture. If you hold it still if you can. Cool.
Perfect. I'm just going to have a little sit down over here. Uh, why no reverse osmosis? Well, um, it's, it's a lot more expensive to use. There's a lot of waste water uh, when you're creating reverse osmosis water. And the plants and the fish and everything that uh, are growing in these aquascapes are all happy with harder water. So it's, it's much less labour intensive and it's, you know, cheaper as well. And we just want to make it more accessible to people, you, you know, if you start telling people, yeah, you've got to buy a special filter to make your water nice, then it's, it's another barrier to entry, which we don't want to, you know, the less barriers to entry for the hobby, the better. And definitely one of those is the, the ability to be able to use your tap water. For more advanced aquascapers and people that, are, you know, really want to gr grow the absolute healthiest plants they can or potentially breed, you know, sensitive fish, then reverse osmosis is necessary. So it's still gluing uh, Buca Philandra, mate? Yeah, got almost the last of the Buca Philandra red. Let's have a look. Tried to cover some of the joins in the wood and the, the cut-offs. Yeah, because... This doesn't look natural. Yeah, this is a good example here. You've got this kind of sawn-off yeah. edge. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying they didn't need to do anything, but it's just an example. Yeah. Asian rummy would look nice in here, they're saying. I That's agree. A good shout, actually, yeah. And they, would, they actually do like hard water. They do better in hard water than soft water. John Starkey, some of that, save some of that boost for me, he says. Will do, will do. Oh, sorry, this is not um, Boost for Landry Red. Backtracking. Kedigang. Kedigang. Yeah. Kedigang. I didn't want to point out your error publicly, mate. There's <laughs> like nearly 600 people watching. <laughs> So this so is much, so used to saying Booker Philandra Red because he sells so much. Of yeah, the this, is, is, uh, this is Booker Philandra Kedigang. And this is the potted variety. It's not the. Is this? Yes, no. This is the new, yeah. That's great that they're doing it in a pot now, isn't it? It's, it's beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, love it. Yeah, good taste, Jen. How's the uh, how's the plans going, Jen? Or we'll, we'll chat later. But for the for your um, your new venture, I'm really excited to catch up on it and see how you're getting on with it. Speaking of Busa Falandria, check out these bad boys in here. Crazy. So play. Yeah, why not? Hit the like button, guys, if you like what you see. Oh, 
a better word. Just detailing. Yeah. Nice. Just add a bit more. Yeah, like that. Just glue that down. Mm -hmm. What's the hardness PPM in aquarium gardens? Do you know? Uh, it's about 350 to 400. Yeah, same as my home, yeah. 350 to 400. Which, it sounds really hard, but as you can see, it's not a problem here. How's my battery doing? That's a good question. I don't wanna, I can't tell without closing the app, I don't think. I think, I think it will come up with a notification saying the battery is low. Uh, what frogs have I gone for there? Oh, I can't remember the species name, the little blue one. <laughs> I think the uh, dendrobates, but oh, I can't remember the name. Dendrobites, maybe. Is there a tink? Is there a tink, tink word in there as well? God, I sound like I'm going crazy. Any frog experts out there? Is that, that blue one, please? Yeah, the blue one. The pretty blue one. Yeah, dendrobites, that's the one. Tink, tink aureus. How long we've been running now? Hour and forty. Well, the, as a last resort, I can unplug the microphone and plug my um, power pack in. The audio won't be as good. That's the only thing. But it's better than not having any footage at all, isn't it? I suppose. Are you using it as an epiphyte? Yes. Nice. So this is a good technique, guys. You can use Hogrophila pinnatifida makes a really great epiphyte plant, and if you keep it well trimmed, it maintains its compact, com compact appearance. Hey, people know what the uh, the frog name is. Any idea of the cost of all the plants? How many pots are you using altogether? Uh, I think it's about, uh, about 40 to 50 pots. 40 to 50 pots yeah. times that by a fiver. So about 250 quid's worth yeah. of plants? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're going on it's the very, very heavy side of plants. Yeah. So we all know the benefits. Yeah, I mean, it is worth talking about the benefits of planting heavy from the outset. The, the trouble is with the, the potential trouble with a brand new aquascape is, is the, there's always the, a battle between algae and plants. So the more plants we have, the better we look after those plants, the less chance of algae you get. So, you know, we've, Dave's been lucky to be supported by Tropica here. So he's obviously happy to use loads and loads of plants. You could get away with using less, but it's always a good idea to you know, as many as you can afford. And it's always, it's a, actually quite an overlooked uh, problem. Some people will potentially spend a lot of money on the, the system in terms of the tank, the cabinet, lighting, CO2, and then they'll try to save a little bit of money on the plants and only buy like, you know, just a few pots. But that's the worst thing because you're just going to run, run into issues. You need that high plant biomass right from the start to help with these algae issues, which is so pop, so common in, in new setups. Uh, what glue are you using? It's an Ister glue, isn't it? Insta, Ister glue, yeah. Yeah, perfect, thanks mate. Uh, yeah, we 250 pounds worth of plants here, so about 300 US dollars. Um, I'm not sure what the prices are like in, in uh, Europe versus America, but we're, we're very lucky in Europe. We've got access to some beautiful greenhouses 
really high quality plants from various suppliers, obviously. Tropica is, is my favourite. Um, probably w one of the most popular that you sell in the store, Dave, Tropica. Yeah. The yeah, plants. Yeah. I think people have just got, they want really good quality plants. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, you might spend a little bit more, but it's just guaranteed to get that good quality. Twice the cost in the USA for plants, wow. That's one bonus of living over here. Electrical goods are cheaper in the USA though, aren't they? I've noticed, any electro electronic items and... It's really taking shape now, all these epiphytes. Yeah. Are you right for misting for a bit? Yeah, I'll go for mist. How long before we had the water? Probably got another hour or so, would you yeah. say? Yeah. Yeah. Amazing work, love the podcast, thank you very much. What's your favourite plant in this scape? Ooh. Mine's probably at the moment the Bigger Philandric Edigan. Love it. Beautiful plant. How many kilograms of uh, rock did you use, Dave? Ooh, it was about somewhere in the region of 15 to 20 kilos. Okay, 15 to 20 kilograms. That's about 50 pounds in weight for our American friends. Do in vitro plants suffer from melt? Uh, hopefully not. If it's a fresh, healthy plant to start with and you put it in you know, good conditions, you know, good aquarium conditions, then it shouldn't melt. Uh, John's asking if you've got these lights in stock. Not yet. This is a, te a, pro uh, this is a test one, basically. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not these ones, John. I'd, I'd recommend the uh, uh, Twin Star or the ADA Solar RGB or the. In fact, if you're getting a 60p, I'd get this light here, the ADA Aqua Sky RGB. Yeah, I 100% recommend that light. Yeah, and the and the and the uh, light screen at the back as well. Good night, Brad. Brady, it is late, 1.45 a.m., wow. John, let me know when you're in the area. Just drop me a, a message and I'll see if I'm around. I can maybe come and meet you at Dave's. I mean, that Dave, Dave Shanahan's coming as well, isn't he, over the next yeah, week, I think. Oh, is, it, is it tomorrow? No, it's the weekend, isn't it? I think so, yeah. It's the weekend, I think. Yeah. Next weekend, not this weekend. Yeah. Have you got any more Coca Cola? Yeah. Yeah, sorry, George, would you like a drink? <laughs> yeah, I'm gasping. <laughs> Thanks, mate. You ain't got any beers, have you? Coca, I almost went out and got some. You almost get some. Yeah, I, I was thinking of bringing some beer. beers as well. We should have had like a, actually beer at the end, shouldn't we? Do you want a coffee or a Coke? I'll have a Coke, mate. Thanks, Thanks mate. How big is the tank? It's a three feet long or 90 centimetres by 50 centimetres front to back or 20 inches by 18 inches tall. 
or 45 centimetres. It's about 200 litres or 50 US gallons. Anyone watching, can they let me know in the comments if they've done a YouTube live stream before, can you temporarily just switch over the app, you know, so I can see my, my uh, live battery life on the, on the home screen? Does anyone know if we can like, temporarily just close the app and then restart it? Because I'm really, I'm really reluctant to, you know, because if I swipe up there, is that going to shut the whole video down? I don't know if I'd risk it. <laughs> you could do a test on your phone, couldn't you? And then just delete the video straight after, so you... On YouTube? Yeah, just do a YouTube Live right now. Um, yeah, plus, that's it, Live. Yeah, just, just, just type in anything, just put toilet. There you go, go for it, done. And you can actually do... Um, unlisted so no one can see it anyway. Oh, nice. yeah, perfect. Sorry about this guys, we just need to check the battery life. Uh, next. Oh, we've got to do. No, I don't know about that. No, required, not selected. Not for kids. No. Just, just do this, let it go. Go live and just just let it keep rolling just for a few seconds, and then yeah, swipe that up, hit it again. Is it still going? I think so. It's, it's, it's on it. four oh, seconds. It's stopped, isn't it? It's paused. Oh, no, it's going, going again, again now. Should I do it again just to Yeah, it? do it again. Yeah, do it now. I'm gonna leave it for a little minute. Open it up again. Just pauses. You know. Okay, guys, we're going to, I'm just going to check my, oh, it's stopped, it's going again. Okay, I'm going to just going to pause you for a second, guys, I just need to check my, go into control centre, ah, okay, I'm just going to rotate you this way for a minute. Oh. 34%, yeah, got it, thanks guys, 34%, so that's a third. Uh, so we've got a third left. So we've got a, yeah, we've got about half an hour before I need to, think, yeah, if you get a wiggle on, mate. <laughs> <clears throat> speed, speed planting. Speed planting. Are you going to start off with foreground stuff, I guess? Well, stuff at the front in the soil? Yeah, no, I'm going to be, I'm going to do all the soil at the back. The Everyone's back. saying skate faster. Skate <laughs> faster. Uh, is, my, is that my drink down there, mate? Is it? This video is brought to you by Coca Cola. I'm not normally, um, don't normally drink soda. It's a 900. This is a 600 here. 1200, 900, 1500, 900. Uh, Darren DeRoos, tank looks great. What stem plants would do best in low tech tank? Less chance of bottom leaves dropping off due to lower light in the bottom. I really like Hygrophila Simensis 53B. Jonesy boy, can you give a shout out to my mate Ross? He loves your work. Shout out to uh, Ross. I have a, I've got a charger down here, so I'll plug that in in a minute. Um, but I've got the microphone plugged into the, I've got an iPhone, unfortunately. So the microphone's plugged into where you charge it from and I haven't got an adapter. Because I'm a very poorly prepared aquascaper. <laughs> uh, what's the plant in here? The midground, that's the Blixia japonica. Beautiful plant from Tropica Limited Edition, one to grow. You put any blixia in here? Yeah, I'm gonna put some 
Right, just need to do another video, mate. Another bit of video and a photo yep. footage. <clears throat> A bit of a cool. Is that one done? Yeah, welcome, Darren. Okay, where are we doing now then? We're planting, then this is the Lagonendra Mibolgii. What regulator is Dave going to use in the tank? We are going to test a new regulator by Life Aqua. Oh, okay, I didn't realise I did in the CA2 as well. Yeah, yeah it's in the cabinet. Show it up? Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> Looks familiar, actually. Is it too easy to Yeah, I've got sent on. This is exactly the same. <laughs> Just been rebranded, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Oh, I think I know. Is it a dual, dual stage? Yeah, it's dual stage, yeah. yeah. Three in the morning in Indonesia. Well, thanks for staying up. I uh, know what being awake at three in the morning is like. Belgium is watching, yay. Yeah, a lot of these plants aren't demanding plants. Um, you know, Dave and I are both fans of easy plants. They still look beautiful. They're obviously easier to grow. And, you know, it means if someone came, comes in the store, sees all these easy plants doing really well, you know, it's inspirational. And it, if someone actually has a lower energy system, maybe not as an expensive system, they can still have success with these beautiful plants. Sticky feet. Okay, more plants. I always think you sound like a wizard casting spells when you lose Latin names, that's funny. Thanks for the super chat, Aquarium Adventures. Uh, appreciate it. So I'm going to, just for, just for our friend uh, Graham, I'm going to go through all of these plant names. Uh, we have Quillum, Qualamostratum. <laughs> and we have Lagonendra, me boldy eye red. And then we have, uh, what else have we got here? Apologetum, Longnifolia. Poland is watching too. We have Valisneria, Nana, and should we do a bit of EA sprayed recently, mate? No, I'll, I'll do that. I'll get it for you. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Cheers, mate. I thought you were going to do it for me. I've, not a, I've only got two hands, mate. <laughs> I've already been, had complaints about the camera wobbling so much. You're George Farmer, aren't you? Yeah, apparently so. Okay. Nice. So, Crinum, back left. Are oh, you putting the valise all the way along the back? Back. Yeah. And then it's just placing the <laughs> yeah. bulbs and the crinum in. And how do you plant the bulbs? Do you have a little bit protruding from the surface? Yeah, uh, from so the top of the soil? Let's have yeah. a look closer for that. Put about half in. 
about half a bulb in, just enough to anchor it down. Just let it have the top part exposed. Yeah. So it won't rot then. Okay. I might even put a few stones or anchor it down with something at some point. Okay, cool. Yeah, someone's asked why we're not putting the cosmetic sand in earlier. Oh, the issue potentially is you just get loads of debris from the plants. The soil might come forward. Um, so it's just easier to put the cosmetic sand in right at the end and then there's no danger of it getting any dirt on it, basically. Uh, George does such highlighting not create algae issues with slow growing plants. It can do, especially if all of the plants are slow growing. But we will have some very fast growers in here. Dave will probably put some floaters in as well, which will obviously shade uh, the plants below. It also act as a great nutrient export, which will help also help prevent algae. Um, but the fast growing stem plants like the Hesseranthera zostafolia, this is a really, really fast growing weed. Other helping plants you can use are things like Limnophila sessiflora and Hygrophila, most Hygrophila species are quite fast, even Rotalas, um, but things like Hesseranthera and, and Limnophila, um, Sessiflora are probably the most brutally fast growing weeds. Uh, I, don't, I, I hate, I really don't like them, but they're really ideal for beginning, aren't it's, they? It's really just a supporting plant to serve in one purpose. Yeah. One purpose only. The Valis Nana is really quick growing, but it just takes a while to settle in. Yeah. How long will the photo period be? Eight, eight, eight hours? Eight hours, yeah. yeah. Six hours for the first two weeks. Okay. We normally do. Okay, that's cool. Six hours for the first two weeks, eight hours after that. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the cosmetic sand going in because that's going to completely transform. Yeah, it's kind of like the magic moment. Yeah. Yeah, we do use the Ricardia camadrifolia. We've got some that we're going to use later. So it's on these steel meshes. And uh, Dave's just going to pop them in the scape as they are on the steel mesh and let them just kind of mature and grow. I might to get a bit of an inst more of an instant thing, just nick a bit out of... Yeah. Just well, that's the benefit of having so many displays, isn't it? You can yeah. just nick out, swap plants around if you need to. But if you haven't got any to begin with, then just grow it out on the pad first, put it in yeah. some high light and CO2, and then yeah, then take it off the pad and distribute it around the scape. Two months that, two months in or something. Yeah, great idea. Uh, someone's asking Patrick, is there a list of plants that go in it and that go are going in this tank? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure Dave will do a post on his Instagram and Facebook and list all the plant species, so keep an eye out on his channels. Uh, what are your favourite crypts for smaller aquariums? Uh, Crypt Parva, Crypt Willisii, Crypt Pechii. Those three are classics. Maybe some Undulatus red that can grow quite tall uh, in the longer term, but it makes a nice mid-ground for the first few months. It's looking great, Dave. Cheers, mate. Have you been to any pubs yet since the lockdown finished? No, um, I use them quite a lot for takeaways, just to support the local pub. Oh, that's a good that's idea. The view. Yeah, me and Emma went to um, the Crown in where is it? It's not far. What near you? And uh, no, and it's about five miles away. But they do, they've got a massive beer garden. Is that King's Lipton? Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, yeah. And they've got the, um, well, the picnic tables, kind of obviously with social distancing. So. Well, Ab Abbott's Lipton. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can sit out in the garden and have a beer. It's lovely. Yeah, nice. Uh, last of the Corinthians, will this tank have CO2 injection? Absolutely. I think all of the tanks in here, apart from one, have CO2. We're a big fan of CO2. Um, 
And I would encourage anyone, it's, there's nothing wrong with low tech and there's nothing wrong with no CO2 injection, but it's just a bit more limiting. And, and if you really want to get the best growth possible, the most robust and colorful growth, then CO2 injection is recommended, I would suggest. Yeah, even even with even with easy plants, I think a background level helps even just a little, yeah. Even if you're running low light and just you know, background level is better than nothing at all. And the the the, the differences are night and day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I get my CO two from Dave. Refillable cylinders. He makes me pay for it as well. <laughs> I do have to pay for it, but I'm very happy to pay for the excellent service that we have here. Look at this. Yeah, okay. Let me put this microphone on here. And then we can just have a chat. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just kind of relaxing. Let's get some more so leaning over the tank a bit. <clears throat> So what we've got in here now, then, so we've got Vallisneria, which is this long reedy plant here. We've got Crinum calamistratum, which is this kind of crinkly plant you might just be able to see here, where my finger is. Look at this one. That's, a, that's an amazing specimen, isn't it? Yeah. It looks more like, almost like Crinum, um, what's the other one that's crinkly? Is it Natans? Yeah, that's got longer, flatter leaves. Yeah. Or is, no, it's not. No, that's um, a Thai. No, it is Natans. Oh, the Nathan's, is it? Yeah. yeah, I think it's Nathan's. Beautiful, this though. This is a lovely specimen, isn't it? Lovely. I love the texture of those leaves. Yeah. It's one of the first bulb plants I ever tried, actually. Is that? Yeah. Yeah, it's nearly 20 I, years ago now. I don't think this is the first time I've even it's the first time you've used, used it. it, yeah. It's a beginner. I think, there's a <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a few new plants in here. Um, What's the audio like, guys? Because we've got the microphone kind of attached to the hardscape. It might so. be echoing in the tank. Yeah, let us know what the audio is like. Yeah. It's quite a bit echoey, but not too bad. It's like a subwoofer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to invest in a. Um, I'm going to invest in a decent dual microphone thing, especially with the podcasts now. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to listening to those. Yeah, thanks, mate. We try and do one, at least one a week, maybe two. Yeah, you can really sort of go in depth, can't you? With like a radio show. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna. The first season is gonna be mainly focusing on like beginner frequent house questions. Yeah, and then I think we'll get a taste for what people like, and uh, we can take it in obviously any direction we want to. But I want to make it like a a logical series that starts off super easy, beginner friendly. Yeah, and then yep. as, as the seasons get get going, you know they get a bit more advanced, and we can cover topics in more detail, and we can even. We can even go off topic a bit, you know, discuss because I'm really quite into sort of well-being, yeah, and uh, you know, health and fitness and stuff like that. And I think it's all, you know, a little bit of it's kind of related to aquascaping, Link, linked to aquascaping, isn't it? Because sort of like mind, you know, mindfulness, mindfulness yeah, therapeutic kind of. I find it like right now I'm really relaxed. Yeah, me too. It's just that's what I, I like maintaining the tanks. I like doing the aquascaping. Yeah, makes you sort of feel good. Absolutely. I love the whole process. Um, I love the excitement of the empty tank. I love planning the, the scape, you know, choosing the plants. Okay, I'm just going to check the battery again. 24%. Countdown's on. Countdown's on. I'm wondering if my phone's actually going to give me a little kind of notification that my battery's low when Can it gets you... to below 20%. Can you turn the brightness down to save on battery? Have we got it on low already? Can turn it right down actually, yeah. It's a bit of a drainer. Yeah, it's a bit, isn't it? Yeah. I'm good. Okay. 
closing in on the 400 likes to get George on video doing push-ups. <laughs> I'll have to do it now, won't I? If you go get to 600, I'll sit on your back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, don't say that. We've got nearly 600 people watching, so that's... Arrays. Retract. <laughs> that's the funny thing about audio. <laughs> Free live. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, refillable CO2 cylinders, that's done professionally. You, you, you don't do that <clears> yourself. So you take in your cylinder to your aquarium store that offers that facility. And then they normally get them sent off as well. There's very few aquarium stores. Well, the minority of aquarium stores will actually have their own refilling facility. Thanks, Mark. Oh, 396. I'm going to have to... Yeah. You're welcome, Ray. No problem. So, is everyone enjoying the escape so far? I'm, I'm really excited to see it full of water. I think we're nearly at the end of planting, aren't we? By looking yeah, at... I'm just going to get some blicks here out. Okay, mate. Where are you, where are you putting that? The, oh, on the, on the right? Yeah. So let's see uh, if we can, I'll take you through all the plants that I can see. Uh, so we've got Christmas moss here. This is Bucophalandra kedigang, more Christmas moss. Uh, Bucophalandra wavy green. And Hygrophila pinnatifida, more Bucophalandra wavy green. More Bucophalandra kedigang, Christmas moss, more Bucophalandra. Uh, some Anubius Petite down here, uh, more of the same, Hygropola Pinnatifidia, Anubius Petite, Christmas Moss, and then in the background got an interesting mix here, you've got Quinum Calamastratum here, Aponogeton uh, Longifolia here, uh, Vallis Naria Nana here. And then you can just make out here where my finger is right now. This is the Laganendra Mevoldii red. And then Dave is just preparing some Oblixia japonica right now. Uh, someone's asking, are you going to use the GHL Profilux 4? That was like an aquarium computer, I think. I think Green Aqua are using it. Oh, right. No, we do things old school here. I think. And then you <laughs> dose manually. Yeah, we just dose daily, no. Yeah, and you we don't just dose manually oh, straight out of the bottle. 400 likes. <laughs> You've got, you got to do it now. <laughs> I've got to do it, haven't I? I'm going to just check the battery first. Hang on. Oh no, my battery's run out. Cheerio. <laughs> <laughs> good one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you can't. We've gone down the like now. That's good. <laughs> well, we're back up. <laughs> keep pressing it, keep pressing the button. Yeah. <laughs> so, is this the final This plant? is the final plant. It's and then the cosmetic sand, and then the filling up with water. Yeah. Uh, last of the Corinthians, any epiphyte plants other than Boost, Java, and Anubius worth trying out? Uh, yes, I really like uh, Bulbitis as well. That's a beautiful epiphyte plant. We can also use this Hygrophila pinnatifida as an epiphyte plant, that's worth trying out. There's actually quite a lot of plants you might not think are epiphytic, but they can be used as epiphytes. So uh, we've even used uh, Cryptocorini pechi as an epiphyte, um, Hygrophila araguai, uh, Mon Mycanthum and Monte Carlo. I've used Staragani repens yeah, as an epiphyte yeah, yeah. as well. Um, if you think about it, in the greenhouses, the plants are growing hydroponically and they, they ha don't have their roots in a substrate. So you could use the same principle really by what's what an epiphytic plant is, it's getting its nutrients from its roots through the, through the water, through the water column, which is effectively what's happening in the greenhouses. So arguably you could grow any aquarium plant as an epiphyte, as long as you had some way of physically attaching it. You do need to obviously give it enough nutrients um, some plants might be a little bit more kind of um, sensitive to not having their, their roots in the substrate. But yeah, I would uh, encourage you to experiment. You know, this is how we all learn, how we all grow by experimenting, you know, making mistakes, learning from them. 
you know, achieving great results and learning from them. So, yeah, I'd encourage you to uh, just experiment. I think we need to do a, another video and um, yeah. thingy. And uh, that, that, that'll be the last one of the plants planting section. And then we'll do one of the cosmetic and then we'll do a final one of it being filled up. Okay, mate. Yeah, I'm definitely going to take some out of the scope and just put it in the rocks. Okay, mate. Let me just, uh, yeah, I don't need to film you doing that, it's fine. I'll just film you putting it in. Yeah. Oh, that's good. My phone's actually told me 20%, so that it goes right down to 5%, I think, doesn't it? Gives you warnings. Yeah, it does, yeah. Is it 5 or 10? Yeah, it's definitely 10%. Right, 10%, I'll plug, I'll plug the phone into, a, into my portable charger. Yeah. <clears throat> That's not bad though. It's over two hours of live streaming in it on the, on one battery life. That's yeah, that's not pretty. Good. That's pretty good, isn't it? Do you want to do one from behind the tank as well? And I'll get a picture and a video of you doing that. Uh, David Scapes, what's your favourite wood to skate with? I think mine's probably manzanita or something like this, just like really bold driftwood. What about you, Dave? Favourite wood? Favourite woods, Be I think. Beginner wood? <laughs> I think. <laughs> Nile manzanita is very nice. From, there's manzanita from Tumbar is very nice. Yeah. Um, I do like redmore wood as well, actually. That's good. So let's have a little bit of fun on the stream. Let us know where you're all from. Tell us an interesting fact about yourself that no one knows. I'll start. I live in Huntingdon in Cambridgeshire in England and an interesting fact about me that no one knows or very few people know. Uh, I ha had my appendix out when I was 13 years old on Friday the 13th. And I used to live in a house number 13. Oh. So. That is unlucky. Yeah. What about you, Dave? Bit fun fact? Fun fact. Um, I used to work for a wine company. And I've got a level three qualification, WSET, in wine tasting. Oh, my God. That sounds go. amazing, Dave. Oh, well. Maybe you can take me on a date. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know about wine? Yeah. Do you have a favourite? You like a Malbec, don't you? Yeah, I like a Malbec with me. Um, with your red, with, with your steak. steak. Ribeye? Oh, yeah. Rare. Rare. Yeah, rare. Blue. <laughs> uh, what will Dave do to clear the biofilm off the wood? Well, it, it shouldn't have much because it's been pre soaked. Yeah, it's been, actually, we've given it a bit of a brush off already because it started that biofilm. So, yeah, hopefully. In Oh, Mary was a Port Portsmouth, Virginia, and I was a champion barrel racer. State champion. Oh, my God, that sounds impressive. I don't know what a barrel racer is. Wow. Enlighten us. Something to do with horses? Um, sorry, mate. Colourblind, Connor. Uh, when I was 16, wow. And I did see something interesting that someone said.
Yeah, estimated it's going to be about two and a half thousand dollars this entire setup. Um, someone said they got synesthesia, which they kind of get colours and stuff mixed up. I think it's really fascinating. Uh, Jen Williams, I went to college on scholarship for playing the bassoon. Everybody will knows about the race cars. That's true. <laughs> Uh, little Bobby, I was born in Waco, Texas. I once ran 10 marathon in 10 years, one each year. Little Bobby. That's awesome. TV. Oh, that's so cute. Dave's uh, a new father. How, how old's Kate? Uh, six months, six and a half months. Maisie, isn't it? Maisie, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thrilled. Yeah. Amazing. You love dad life, don't you? Build high speed winches for launching gliders. Only company in Europe. That's awesome. Wow. Carl Wilcox from Lincoln. Come to visit the shop a couple of weeks ago. I like fish. <laughs> uh, N30T0. I'm from Latvia. All my flat is full of snakes and seven fish tanks. Wow. That sounds like a busy flat. Uh, Seb Butcher. I live in Norwich. And when I was 12, I cracked my head open, banging my... Head on a first aid box. <laughs> in the right place. A guitar man just became a dad himself. Named my boy after my favourite amp, Marshall. <laughs> <laughs> That's quality. Uh, Emma Palin. Hi guys, currently living in the Cotswolds in the UK. I've just bought our first house and set up an e -water fresh, uh, EAF Freshwater 1200. Awesome. Perfect, mate. We've got some mature uh, Blixer. Get an instant impact. Instant impact. Oh, nice. Uh, we've got some more fun facts. <clears throat> From Queensland, Australia, and I'm a rural firefighter. <coughs> wow. That's cool. Sounds um, pretty dangerous. Miss Lainata, my daughter, adopting from Bolivia. I'm American, living in Memphis, Tennessee, and I also went to college with a scholarship in bassoon. It's the bassoon bonanza we've got here today. Um, Loco Teddy, I'm about to lose power during a storm. What can I do for my tank? Um, try not to worry. Most freshwater systems are fine without power for, for a good while. Just do big water changes when you do get power back because you may have lost some um, filter bacteria and you might get a little bit of an ammonia spike, so water changes are always a good idea. Oh, it's great to see you guys chatting in the chat, this is good. I'm just gonna check my battery life, 16%. Okay, great. Got 16% to go. I was slowly losing the plot. <clears throat> definitely, definitely a good idea not to bring beers. <laughs> that would have tipped me over the edge, I think, and I would have gone full on crazy. Is it going to float? <laughs> Steve, Steve Gould's just saying. Hope not. It'd be a bit embarrassing for Dave if it does. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Sand, get the sand in there, mate. Yeah, let me get a video of you actually pouring the sand in, if that's yeah. okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so nearly at the end now, guys. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to have time to watch it film live stream it getting filled with water. We'll see where we are for time and um, battery, etc. Once the sand's in. It would be nice to see it full up, wouldn't it? And I do appreciate you guys watching all this time so far. Anyone watched it all the way from the beginning? Let me know. Let us know in the live chat. I really appreciate you guys. Nice to go for it. You're going for the sand? Cool. Uh, oh, you put it in there. Okay, cool. Right. Yeah. Can you do it from the back? Maybe start on that side over there? Let's just rest this on here for the viewers.
Good, go for it. Cool. Hold that thought. I'm just gonna do a still of it and then I'm gonna do the same with the other camera and then that and then you can just carry on as much as you need to then. Okay, let me just do the other camera. <clears throat> Okay, just pour it right super slowly. And then just keep pouring slowly. Perfect, you know, you can just carry on to your heart's content now. Hit the like button, guys, if you like what you see. Yeah, my book, <clears throat> I'm not sure what the policy is with buying in Australia or New Zealand. You I don't know if you can get it from Amazon, and Amazon will ship it from the States. That might be your best bet. Um, yeah, I need to speak to the publishers and see what the international kind of policy is. Love the colour. Is this ADA sand? Yeah, no plata. Nice. This really brings it together now, that contrast. Yeah, I love this part. What do you think guys let us hit the like button unless you've already hit it if you're enjoying this i love this bit it looks like a beach yeah i definitely recommend the chicago aquatic plant society they're awesome awesome people out that way especially my mate jeff who's building my website for me oh didn't know that yeah awesome Yes, it's mainly going to be a little focal, you know, like a portal where people can just watch all my latest yeah. content for find me on the, on the channels. Yeah, it's a great idea. It's really good. Um, yeah, let us know what fish you'd like to see in here, guys. Um, I think the recommendation of Asian Rummy Nose <coughs> was really good. Yeah, actually, I've been thinking about that. And that's a really good show. Yeah. <clears throat> you get the males and the females. They... they the females are quite drab, but they, they're, they're, they're kind of necessary to get the best colours out of the males. Okay. So, um, yeah, I definitely recommend a you know, good balance of male and female. Try not to break the glass, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to leak in tank. <laughs> Galaxemas borers as well. They're always a cool fish, aren't they? I love, I need to do a tank dedicated to those guys. They're so cool. Let's have a little look from the back. So Dave's just uh, doing some detailing now with the with the sand. Yeah, when it, when I publish this video, I'll, I'll edit the description to include all the plant species names. I'll get Dave to send me a list over. Oh, in fact, I can probably remember or look at the footage, can't I? It's straightforward enough. Mm -hmm. But you can see, guys, planted heavily. Looking great. Good morning from New Zealand. Yeah, I guess it's morning time over there now. Feels like morning time for me. <laughs> Sorry, mate. It's all right. It's fun. Oh, I need to get a picture of this, absolutely. I'll take that out and do that. Yeah, just a second, mate. Um, 
Okay, uh, just place it in and I'll get a still of it. Yeah, that stay there, that's perfect. And just stay there again. And then, well, can you come out and then go in again while I film? Yeah. So, uh, all right, go in now. Thanks for joining the live stream, guys. If you've got to go, we really appreciate you watching us. It's perfect, mate. And then just do the same sort of thing with this camera. Okay. Um, so pop it in for the still photo. Stay there. Okay, now do do it again with the for the video. Okay, go for it. Perfect. Awesome job. Crack on now. <coughs> I love the fact that the, in the chat we've got people like Mary, who's like a huge contributor to the comment section of my videos, and she's chatting with Jen Williams, who's one of my uh, moderators on the... Oh, right. That's really, uh, it's nice. really cool. Yeah. I really want to get the... I think the aquascaping community is quite underrepresented by females at the moment. I don't know in terms of... Like, I don't know if you've looked at your demographics, but it's about 90% male, like, yeah. for me anyway. Instagram, I think it's 82 males, quite high, yeah, really high. Well, we're a lot down to the last 10%. All right, a um, bit, bit of gravel. I think what we'll do is do do gravel and then just start filling, yeah. and then we'll say cheerio, yeah. and then you can do an update post on your channels tomorrow, can't you? Sounds good. Cool. We've been going nearly two hours now. These, these are just cabinet samples for the EA Aquascaper cabinets. What do you think guys? Hit the like button if you're enjoying it. I think it's amazing. Dave's done a really great job in this. Can't wait to see it grow in. I think I'll probably be doing update videos on this for the Tropica YouTube channel as well, so you can look forward to some content from there. <laughs> Grappa. Well, they do definitely exist, and Jen Williams is here, and she's very much involved with the Grappa guys. Uh, David Scopes, did I ever visit the Green Machine? They shut down suddenly, wonder where Mr. Finley went. Yeah, um, I knew Green Machine right from the start. They, I did a workshop there in 2009, 11 years ago. And yeah, and then the guy as well. And I think uh, James, he just re retired. He got to an age where he just uh, don't think he had to work anymore and decided to retire, which I think is fair enough. Yeah, Jen, Jen will tell you all about Guapa, I'm sure. Um, great organisation. I actually did a keynote um, talk for the AGA, the Aquatic Gardeners Association, in 2015, when the Guapa guys hosted it in Washington, D.C. And that's where I actually met Jen for the first time, and we've become uh, really good friends ever since. Uh, what stones are these? These are black mini landscape rock or black Syriou stone. So it's like regular Syriou or mini landscape, but it's been acid washed to give it a much darker colour, basically. So Dave's now just adding some detailing. Is this ADA? Yeah, no, this is a Prodivio gravel. Oh, okay, it looks nice. Matches the, the sand nicely. Yeah, so naturally mix. Yeah, I'm just going to check my battery again. 8%. Was 
what's your plan? Is you just gonna um, say cheerio? But yeah, uh, we'll get, get get you to finish. I've got enough time for you to finish your detailing, haven't we? Probably, and then we'll say cheerio before we start filling, and then we'll we'll do updates. Obviously, oh, just. Your battery and your camera is about to run out. Got another one in the um, main that's running. Cool. On charge. Oh, nice. Okay. We might be alright because we've only got a couple more clips to do anyway. Can you just put your hand in again? Just keep it in there for a minute. Perfect, and then just uh, do some action now, because I'll just do this last bit of filming. Cool, I'm well done. Uh, okay, I think that's probably a good opportunity to say our farewells to everyone. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, let's just switch this round. Uh, boom, do you want to come next to me and we can chat to the audience? I hope you don't look too tired. You look great. Just hold that between us. <laughs> yeah, cheers, mate. Okay. Uh, look in the lens, not at your face. It's a real, so you look in the, in the viewer's eyes. Uh, <laughs> I always do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, there you go. A, I think you'll agree, beautiful aquascape from Dave, owner at Aquarium Gardens. I uh, hope you enjoyed that, guys. Thanks so much for watching and staying with us all the way through. If you did, really appreciate it. Uh, we will do be doing future updates. I'll be updating this on my own channel and maybe even the Tropica YouTube channel. I'm sure Dave will be doing regular updates on your yeah, yeah. Instagram and Facebook yep, page. Yep. Um, we did this because we wanted to do a proper workshop with a, a real audience, but obviously with the, uh, with the situation that we're living at the moment, uh, we couldn't do that. But we thought this would be the next best thing to, to bring you a kind of live workshop, just, just Dave and I. Um, thanks to Dave for inviting me. No, thanks for you coming in, coming in, uh, spending your evening doing this. Uh, beautiful skate, mate. Really impressed. Um, thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate you. Thank you. All. Cheers. Uh, you take care. Keep on skating. See ya. Cheerio. Awesome.